Hello and welcome to Wednesday in the Word with Roger and Cheryl. Uh, giving just a, just a moment to uh, get some folks on the Facebook Live and then the, the, the YouTube video. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, this is Veterans Day. Uh, at the time of this taping, it's, it's Veterans Day. And uh, first of all, let me give honor to all those that have served in our country, that served to keep our freedoms to keep uh, uh, the, the honesty and integrity of our country. And uh, today, as we go into the program, we want to talk about some things that, uh, first of all, we want to look at the spiritual side, but we want to look, look also at how they apply uh, to us. And I'm going to be sharing some things, things that I have learned uh, over the years, but I'm going to be sharing the Word of God, and Cheryl and I are going to uh, be... be uh, agreeing in prayer for you, we're going to let God use our gifts and and uh, callings to uh, bless you. And uh, uh, we feel like it'll be worth your time, worth uh, you staying with us long enough to uh, hear the word of the Lord. If you can't watch it all the way through, and I know we're in the middle of the day, if you can't watch it all the way through right now, please come back and watch the whole thing later because I think it's a very vital program that we are uh, moving into today. And uh, uh, so stay with us. Cheryl, as we open up, uh, you know, actually what I wanted to, to say, a couple of weeks ago we shared on a program, we, we talked about putting on the whole armor of God, and we talked about uh, those things that, that God's given us spiritually, uh, but, he, but he compared it with uh, armor, which is a, a weapon of warfare. And we're going to talk more about that today, but before we start, let's pray. Will you pray as we open up? And ask, just ask the Lord to be with us today and touch the people. Father, we bless your holy name, and we just thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the light that comes when we read and listen to what the Word has to say. It's your thoughts, it's your attitudes, it's what you know will work in our lives as our Creator. And we thank you, Father, for giving us the privilege of having yes. Bibles and uh, resources that we can use to understand what you're saying. Thank you for the prophets of God who speak the truth and the apostles and all of the giftings that are here to help the body of Christ, to edify us and build us up. Now, Father, it is Veterans Day in America, the United States of America, and... Um, so that is something we hold dear and we honor the people who laid down their lives or those who gave their life in battle and are still with us. Father, we pray for all of the veterans that you would bless them and you would help them and you would encourage and strengthen them. We pray for the families of veterans who have laid down their life and that you would just... Um, remind them of the cause that they gave their life for. Yes, Lord. Our freedom in America is very important to us, and right now it's in a very um, high question as to how long that will continue. So we are asking you, Father, to help us as the body of Christ to listen with holy ears to what you are saying. Bless the people today and those that will watch in the future, Lord. Let their ears just hear and let something come alive inside of them, in their spirit, soul, and even their body, Father, that will touch them and take them up higher into Christ so that the church can arise, be the lighthouse, the salt of the earth, and we can make a difference. And we give you praise and honor now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Again, we just welcome you uh, to the program today. And again, uh, happy Veterans Day uh, in, here in America. I noticed my brother from uh, Pakistan just got on, and uh, I know it's not uh, the same holidays there, but it's, there's the, what I'm going to teach today and show you, and what Cheryl and I are going to share is, uh, is uh, fits in, no, no matter where you are. But right now, especially in uh, the United States, I want us to uh, listen carefully today because I have. You know, my, my uh, posture sometimes is I try to avoid a fight or conflict, and, and, uh, but Holy Spirit won't let me do that because of my calling, because uh, that, that uh, we need to be able to speak up. And I, there's a way to do that and still remain 
uh, in the the uh, flow of the Holy Spirit. Uh, because if, if we get in the wrong spirit, then God's not going to be behind it. And uh, I've learned one thing, that I'm not going to fight any battles uh, without Him. Amen. And with Him, the battle's already won. So let's, uh, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, uh, the, the 10th chapter, familiar uh, uh, chapter. And I thought, Lord, uh, do I really need to, to teach on this again or preach on this again? Because uh, we've done it over the years. But I'm going to give you some uh, some different uh, twists and different ideas. Not just twists. but but And then we're going to go to Philippians, the second chapter, if you want to mark those down. I hope you've got your Bibles and your notebooks. Uh, first of all, let me talk to you um, as an American. I'm going to talk to you as, as a veteran myself. There were some things I learned, and I'm trying to put this, uh, put this on... Uh, uh, Facebook earlier for some reason after I get so far it would kick me out and I'll, I'm gonna have to go back and uh, do it another way later uh, but it'll and you can watch for for it uh, but you know there was something I learned in my years of service uh, a couple of things I learned in my years of service during the Vietnam era whenever I was in the military first of all I learned about a thing called friendly fire uh, friendly fire is whenever uh, that uh, people of the same, maybe allies, or sometimes even people of the same uh, branch of service or whatever, uh, get confused and there's uh, what they call friendly fire and, and people are wounded or even killed uh, because somebody got confused and didn't know who the enemy was. Uh, and, you know, I think that's happening a lot a lot in America today, and I think it's happening in the church as well. Let me let me tell you what's happening. Uh, because we've allowed the political views and those things to come into our life, and I, I I'm very strong on on what I view because, but I believe I base everything that I believe in, in even politically on the Bible and on the Word of God. Uh, but that being said. Uh, there is a way to approach our warfare. We can't be confused on who the enemy is. If we begin to fire on one another, and I've seen some of that happening. I've seen I've seen some division. I've even had to uh, delete some posts on my own uh, on my own page where I simply out of the out of the calling and out of my heart uh, desired to help the body of Christ and help us understand how to proceed from here. And people got mad because they weren't wanting to go. People really don't want to go to a place of humbleness and a place where that we present Christ. Uh, you know, there's some battles that I'm not equipped to, to fight. The battle over the election, uh, President Trump and the legal teams, they're equipped to fight that. Uh, there are others that I've, I've seen, uh, even uh, lawyers and different people that I've seen and are aware of, uh, that are equipped to fight that battle. What my... my uh, job is now is to agree in spirit and and to agree with the word of God uh, that that truth and justice come forth. Now uh, that being said, there's also and, and I believe that's that is part of the the weapons of our warfare. I believe the the battle that's going on in the United States today over the election uh, the the roots of it is a spiritual warfare. Do you hear what I'm saying? The roots of it is a spiritual warfare. Uh, I know, and all my life I heard people say, well, stay out of the politics and stay out of that, uh, that side. And I, I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. I, I um, come at everything I do uh, from the eyes of, of being a minister, a man of God, a servant of the Lord. But I want you to look what, uh, maybe, uh, let's back up. We we're very familiar with the fourth verse of the second chapter of Corinthians. Where it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We'll get back to, to that in a minute. But I want you to watch how uh, Paul, knowing he's going to address the warfare, Paul coming into this, and he says, "Now I beseech, uh, now I, Paul myself, beseech you by the meekness." Watch the terms that he uses here, because he's coming in to address warfare. And he says, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. Now, Paul 
reminding, I think, himself, but also setting the stage for those that he's going to be ministering to to receive him. And I'm going to join Paul in that. With meekness and gentleness, let's talk about some problems that exist. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to say in the U.S., but then I'm going to go beyond that and say problems that exist in the church. Because uh, if we approach this thing with meekness and gentleness, uh, then we're going to find God's way of handling, uh, and I don't mean I don't mean passiveness and weakness. Now, some some people uh, wrongly identify uh, meekness and gentleness as passiveness. It's not passiveness. Uh, so uh, he says, uh, "I beseech you." Verse two says, "I beseech you that you may that I may not be bold when I am present with you." Uh, excuse, excuse me. I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present. In other words, I may not have to come in here and, and be, be forward and aggressive uh, in dealing with things. Uh, you know, now somebody said, well, there's only one way to deal with it. We've got to be aggressive. Well, I, I agree being aggressive in the spirit. But the spirit never changes his uh, demeanor. He never uh you know, never changes the way he presents Jesus Christ to the world. Now, uh, it doesn't mean he pre presents it in weakness, but can I tell you, getting loud and getting uh, getting mad and getting uh, angry at people and dividing over uh, points of doctrine, all those things, is not uh, is not God's way. What God what is God's way is that we speak firmly, that we speak the word of God, and let the word of God defend itself. Uh, it says, "I beseech you that you may that I may not be bold when I am present, uh, with with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some." In other words, he's got some lessons to talk to some. He's got some specific uh, folks to talk, teach, and talk uh, talk to about some problems. Uh, you know, in case you haven't noticed, you look around. There is problems. There's problems. Uh, in, in America, there's problems in the church, there's problems in homes, uh, but, but it's time that we approach these problems uh, with the uh, nature and with the authority of God. Now, uh, like I said, already said, uh, just being, uh, you, you know, just, just trying to be macho, the word macho, you know what the word macho means? Macho means big and dumb. I learned that from a big man, uh, Brother Kelly Warner, years ago. Uh, macho means big and dumb. You know, uh, 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 just being macho and saying, I'm going to take care of this problem is not going to change it. But whenever we allow the weapons of our warfare to be the weapons that God is using, uh, then uh, we set God into motion to go forward in what He wants. See, God's got an agenda. Now, uh, <clears throat> For though we walk in the flesh, are you listening? Paul said, "Though we we you and I, we're we're walking in the flesh in this body, in this body is what he's talking about. We're we're walking in the flesh, not. Uh, and you're going to see that we've got to come away from being fleshly minded. Uh, but though though we walk in the flesh or in this body, we do not war after the flesh. We're there. We're not." Uh, warring against flesh and blood. Can you hear what I'm saying? See, so now, as I approach every warfare, not just those that are, uh, not just those that are uh, right present in front of me, but I approach every warfare. And if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, if you, well, if you're a human being, you, you have warfare. It's just we, are, we approach our warfare differently as the body of Christ. Uh, verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare, ours, yours and mine, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, say through God. Through God. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, I believe we all can agree that there are some strongholds that need to be pulled down. There are strongholds in our personal lives. There are strongholds that try to come against us uh, uh, each and every day. You know, I, I have to admit the past couple of days because of, of many different things. I've got a 
a sick brother in the hospital in Winston-Salem that, uh, that I'm praying for and, and interceding for, and I see the country in the shape it's in, and, 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 and there's warfare and thoughts going through my mind, but I remind myself the weapons of my warfare is not carnal. Right here on this Veterans Day, I want to tell you, uh, it's time that we, the body of Christ, uh, take up arms, not arms of, of guns and, and, and uh, cannons and, and, and uh, carnal things, but we take up uh, the, the weapons, uh, and, and he starts out, first of all, uh, with of meekness and gentleness. Now, don't misunderstand gentleness and meekness now because gentleness and meekness just steps us back out of the way and allows God to step forth. And can I tell you, hallelujah, whenever God steps up, uh, all the Goliaths that's before you, all the lions and the fiery furnaces and all those other things have to bow down to the name of Jesus. All the Philistine armies, all those things, uh, the Red Seas before you have to bow down uh, to the name of Jesus. All right. It says, casting down, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ. See, don't you notice what it said? It, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, where does that start? Well, if they would let their minds get uh, they're thinking straight now. No, it starts with you and me. See, it starts uh, whenever we make a decision, I'm going to let the mind of Christ abide in me and let the mind of Christ operate in me. Now, uh, again, we don't want, we, the body of Christ, don't want to get into this, uh, the thing called friendly fire that I just talked about because the friendly fire uh, is whenever we're shooting and biting and devouring one another, uh, you know, and and uh, I've seen some of that even on Christian television. I've seen some of that uh, because you know some they someone disagree with somebody else. Well, I believe that some people's position in this should be a position of quietness. It shouldn't be a, not everybody needs to stand up and try to prophesy. Uh, somebody, some of us need to sit and say, I agree with what God's already said. I agree with the prophets that's already spoken. Uh, you can find that on, on back on the Facebook page there. So let's be careful not to get uh, in that position of friendly fire where we are harming one another and harming the body of Christ and even harming fellow Americans. So we need to be uh, we need to be cautious as we understand uh, the, the, the attitude. Let me, I'm going to go back to verse 1 one more time. and says, uh, Beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. And see, whenever Paul's coming into this, he's coming into this to deal with problems, to deal with warfare, that he knows is not the flesh. It's not these people that I'm going to deal with. That's the problem. It's the imaginations. It's the high things that exalt themselves against Christ. Amen. I'm going to go on in just a minute, but Cheryl, I want you to jump in here and just share your feelings and thoughts. Uh, well, I was thinking that um, the first verse is so very important because... Um, there's a scripture, I believe it's in James, that says, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness. And what happens when people are fighting after the flesh, it's out of anger, it's out of self-concern, usually I want my way, I don't care what you say, that sort of thing. But it's generally backed with a lot of anger, and that is not the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Now, it also says to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Well, what did Jesus Christ ask us to obey? He asked us to obey the law of love. It's called the royal law. And when we just allow our emotions to run rampant with anger, uh, it's really impossible to bring any thought into the obedience of Christ until we humble ourselves and repent ourselves of allowing anger to stir up within us. That's our responsibility. 
We're laborers together with God. God gives us the grace. We take the action to get a grip on ourself. There's a fruit of the Spirit called temperance, which is self-control, which is very needed in this day and time and very absent in many people in many places. It's very easy to observe. Amen. But um, these words right here in the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians are vital to our life. We are never going to win a war through fleshly means, through anger, through righteous indignation, which, you know, is called righteous indignation, but oftentimes it's just plain old anger. And sometimes it comes out in meanness, even in Christians. <laughs> and we don't need that. We need a true move of God. Therefore, we must keep ourselves open to what God is saying and what He is wanting to do. And we can't do that if our soul is all triggered up by all these emotions of frustration and anger and if I could just get my hands on them, that kind of thing. But if we return back to the meekness and gentleness of Christ, remember the scripture said he was like a sheep before his shearers. He didn't open his mouth. He didn't retaliate to Pilate. Now he didn't uh, just... As Roger said, he wasn't passive about it. When Pilate said, Don't you know I have power to crucify you? Yeah. Jesus said, You don't have any power except my Father gives it That's to you. Amen. I mean, he didn't back down and he wasn't just passive, but he knew when to open his mouth. And remember that Jesus only spoke what he heard the Father saying. So the Father was backing him up. And he only did what he saw the Father doing. So if the Father was quiet, Jesus was quiet. There's a time to speak. There's a time to listen. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, uh, if we, although Paul used those terms, meekness and gentleness, uh, whenever it came down to the business of the kingdom, Paul, Paul was a, a, a very strong person. Uh, in fact, I'm reminded whenever the sons of Sceva uh, uh, said, uh, to the demons, uh, I cast you out in the name of uh, Jesus, who Paul preaches. And they said, well, Paul, I know, and Jesus, you know, uh, you know, that even demons were subject to Paul in the name of Jesus because he didn't walk in his own ability, he walked in the ability of God. So that was, Paul was no wimp. Paul was no uh, pushover. But Paul, through the spirit that he had, uh, realized, you know, Paul before he when he saw <coughs> Tarsus before his conversion uh, was a very aggressive and, and an angry man, a very mean man, uh, trying to stop the church from uh, going forward until Jesus stopped him and said, "Why, why kick you against the brick?" So there was a change in Paul. Uh, you know, and that's what we got to. Uh, what has God done? God's changed us. Uh, you know, I look at Abraham in the Old Testament. Uh, Abraham was was humble whenever Lot, uh, the problem rose up between him and Lot, Lot's uh, herdsmen and all. Uh, Abraham didn't step out there and say, well, I'm the head of this thing. I'll take the best stuff. Uh, he said, well, Lot, you choose what you want. And go, go do it. And Lot, of course, chose the, uh, the, the plains of Sodom and uh, wound up getting in trouble later. But uh, but you know that didn't stop God's blessing uh, on on what was on Abraham, and you know the situations in the earth. I, I've been uh, praying about some things that I've been working on as far as our personal finance and different things, and and I heard the Holy Ghost says it doesn't matter who's president. Uh, my blessing is going to work in the That's midst right. of you know, and right. and um, I just had to rejoice in that that uh, you know my my. Prosperity is not dependent on on either party. It's not depending on either president. And I believe I believe in what President Trump and I believe in what uh, the lawyers and the attorneys are doing. They are investigating things that are obviously, uh, without doubt, uh, illegal and wrong in the earth and when in the states where you've got uh, five, only five thousand people difference in the votes. Every vote's going to count. So. Uh, we believe in that. Let me let me share this another another veteran story, can I? Uh, because it's very important to what we're teaching today. And this is Veterans Day, and I'm a veteran, so I got the right. 
so one, there was a, a lesson I learned that, that stuck with me all these years, just like I was still sitting uh, in, in those stands. Whenever we were in training, uh, and they, they set the, our platoon in bleachers, and all of, you know, in bleachers we were at different levels, different heights, so we could see in different perspectives. And uh, they, had, uh, they had soldiers, they had people that represented the enemy setting out uh, uh, out in the, the uh, bushes and different places. Uh, and and uh, oddly to say, the ones that were the furthest away, that we were supposed to identify them, and whenever we saw them, we stand up, we see them. And, and then they'll call on you and say, well, where is he? And you, know, you can tell, show. Um, and uh, so the easiest ones to identify were those that were way over there. Uh, so, uh, but 95%, the, the one that 95% of us uh, missed for a long time was the one that was right in front of us, just right down, I mean, it wasn't 10 foot from the bleachers uh, sitting down there. Why? Because we were still looking way out there trying to identify uh, where the enemy was, and finally, uh, whenever uh, I saw somebody standing up, I said, I'm doing something wrong. I'm looking the wrong way, and finally uh, identified it was, he was right there, uh, and he had, a, had the gun in his hand. He got, if he had if it really been an enemy, he could have opened fire and done a lot of damage. Uh, but see, 95% of the platoon was missing the thing that was closest. And I say that to say this, and I, this is what kept kicking off uh, whenever I was on uh, trying to put it on Facebook earlier, which I'll try again later. Uh, but, but uh, and this applies spiritually, but I'm, I'm applying it as a veteran. I'm applying it to uh, the things that are going on in America right now. We've spent four years focusing on uh, the red Russian collusion. We've, we've spoke, focused on uh, China. We've focused on all those enemies afar off that we forgot to look and see what's uh, enemies close to home. And I think that's been the thing that has been the most damaging uh, to us as we find out now uh, that that uh, we're on our own enemy, folks. Uh, you know, whenever we begin to understand that right here, uh, the the danger in stealing elections wasn't with the Russians. It wasn't. It is in our own backyard. And right here, uh, as we uh, sit here, we understand that. Uh, We've been looking way out there, like I was on those bleachers. I was straining my eyes trying to look way out there and couldn't see another one that represented the enemy whenever right there in front of us. I, I still remember the, it was down to my left, right right 10 foot from the bleachers there, uh, just sitting right there with the gun, and I couldn't see him. Why? Because I was looking in the wrong direction. 95% uh, of the, the platoon could not see him uh, because we were... Uh, we were looking in the wrong direction. And I think the enemy has deliberately tried to keep us focusing. Now that, that, that is a lesson that I learned as a veteran, and that's a lesson I think we should learn as Americans. However, let me go beyond that. As the body of Christ, our enemies sometimes are those closest to us. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're those uh, that try to distract us with, uh, with, uh, doctrines with with things that are uh, not uh, important but see the weapons are our, 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 our imaginations we begin to imagine and see I've seen this in the body of Christ begin to say well you can't be promoted or you can't be part of the next move of God if you don't agree with us in this that is a bunch of malarkey uh, because if we can understand God has brought us together to uh, to fight this battle, not with flesh and blood, not with uh, with guns and and and, and cannons and and and, and uh, airplanes and all those things, not with smart bombs, but but God's brought us into this thing. We are in the body of Christ to tear down the strongholds and the imaginations that separate the body of Christ. Amen. Anything? Well, I just want to say that that starts with yourself. It Amen. starts with myself. It starts individually. We can't allow our imaginations to run wild of the things that could happen or the things we want to happen may not happen or, or whatever type of imagination it is. We have to absolutely, ourselves individually, take a grip. Peter said, gird up the loins of your minds. Um, that is our responsibility. We can get a grip on these things because 
That is the only way we can silence our soul and our mind and then hear what God has to say. Amen. Amen. And that's I think that's important, Cheryl, that we that we step back and take a moment, a time when we silence ourselves because Absolutely. if we're hearing so many voices, we need to discern right. which voices are of God. Uh, you know, uh, the, the scripture, there's many voices that are significant in the earth, so we don't want to hear the ones that are uh, conflicting, the, the ones that bring uh, us to a place that we're not walking out our our duty, our calling, our place in the body of Christ. And can I tell you, like never before in the, the body uh, have we had the a need to come together, the need to walk together. Go to Philippians, the second chapter, with me, and I want to talk a little bit here, because there's instruction here that we need to uh, look at. In uh, chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, If there be, any, be therefore any consolation, consolation just means comfort, so he's going to say comfort twice here. If there be any consolation in Christ, if there be any comfort of love in uh if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy. Now let's break that down just a moment because sometimes we just read over things. But what? He said, if there be any uh, consolation in Christ, if you're going to be comfortable in your calling. Now Christ, I want you to keep in mind, uh, Christ means the anointing of God, the anointed of God. If there be therefore any consolation in the anointing you're walking in, if any comfort of love, if any uh, fellowship of the Spirit, and that's very important. Fellowship of the Spirit. We're not fe just fellowshipping because we're good fishing buddies. We're not just fellowshipping because we're husband and wife. We're fellowshipping in the Spirit. See, so so there, there's a higher order than, than fellowshipping in the natural things. That's why it's so important that the church hear what we're saying today uh, because it seems like we have made our fellowship uh, in in the realm of a carnal level instead of uh, the, the <clears throat> excuse me the realms of uh, the spiritual level. Uh, so and he goes on to say any bowels that that's your innermost being bowels of mercy. Now uh, many times we lose our mercy when people become familiar with us. You know it's easier. Uh, to go out here and find somebody that, that that's maybe homeless or not, and we have uh, mercy for them. But the bowels of mercy is that we need to care for one another. Uh, verse 2, uh, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being one, being of one accord in one mind. Now see, there we go back the imagination. We go back uh, over here to Corinthians where we just were just teaching and talking about because uh, the uh, the weapons of our warfare are pull down imaginations. Where is does imaginations live? The imaginations live in our mind, in our thinking. So whenever we, as the body of Christ, as as men and women of God, as kings and priests unto God, uh, we have to stay at a place. Uh, where we are realizing that we got to pull down imaginations. Those imaginations that bring begin to bring accusation against one another, accusation against our brother, and bring us to that place that there's confusion, and next thing you know, there's friendly fire. But we don't need to go there. We need to stay the place that we're in unity because it's in our unity that there's strength in the body of Christ. So uh, being like-minded of one accord, let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. The moment you sense strife, and I believe me, I can tell you, I know the moment whenever the enemy tries to bring strife up, and you know I'm getting better and better at controlling that, uh, but when strife begins to raise up, uh, usually it, it, it's, it's, an accusing, it's an accusing spirit that begins to say they don't care, or they, uh, or well, if they just do differently, <laughs> see that that strife begins to raise up in you, and and it begins to take you outside of the love of God. But see, if we allow, uh, well, let me read it again. Let nothing.